Hi everybody! Welcome to Friday Nights with Emma. How is everybody tonight? How everybody is staying safe and chipper? Trying their best? That's what we're here for. I'm um, just going to get everybody, give everybody a minute to join. Um, when you're there, just give me a thumbs up or a little heart as usual. Oh, hi Dawn! I see you're there. Um, as usual, we've been really good the last few weeks, but if I do disappear, um, just hit the refresh and the video will come back. Hi everybody. So how is everybody? Oh hi, hi. So yeah, it's been a week, another week. So um, what are we doing tonight? Oh, <clears throat> so what I thought I would do tonight, well one of them is a project <laughs> that has been on my list for a while. And uh, that's half square triangles. But the other thing, oh hi Barbara. The other thing I was going to show everybody, because I know some people are scared of it, um, and I don't know if you saw, but I did clean out my big machine, not my, my long arm machine, oh hi Sharon, but I did uh, clean out my main sewing machine this week, and it was pretty fluffy underneath, so what I thought I'd do first, I've got my, my little brother, and I haven't cleaned it yet, I have had a peek inside, and you won't be disappointed, there's a few dust hairs in there, uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And not be afraid of doing it um, and then we'll go straight into quick half square triangles and this is a really nice oh hi Joan nearly nice and quick and easy way of turning a charm pack into a lap quilt or a baby quilt or something if you want to make a really quick gift this makes it really easy so shall we get started oh hi mum I can see mum's there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn you around and I'm going to show you my machine and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So there, there's my little brother. That's one that mum bought me. That's my going to workshops. Oh, hi Edna. My going to workshops machine. So if I zoom in, you'll be able to see the throat plate there. Oh, let me just twist you a little bit more. There we go. Hopefully you'll get a good view. So. I've taken out, this one has two screws, one here and one here, which I've taken out already. Now they can be a bit tricky. Usually your machine, well it's a bit close, will have some sort of screwdriver that comes with it. Um, and it should be at the size that you need to get into there. So it'll be a short one if you don't have much space. The other way you can do it, where's my screws? I'll put them safe. Is if you've got a 2p coin or a 10p coin, you can just use the coin to unscrew your screws if you don't have as much space. So my screws have already been taken out. I've put them somewhere safe for now. Now this throat plate comes in two parts. So it's a little bit tricky. My other one was easier. Oh, let me take, see if that helps. Take that out first. It is, it kind of slides out. And if you don't do it properly, yeah, see, it comes out in two parts. You can get it all in one sometimes, but. And what I would do, if you're a little bit daunted by doing this, is take a picture at each stage. So I would take a picture of this before I took it out with my phone. So I've got a reference uh, picture. And then when I've taken it out, you can take my bobbin out. I will take a picture here so I can see where everything is supposed to go, basically. I'm just going to take my foot off so I've got a bit more space. Uh, oh, you can't really see it from there, but it is fluffy. It is fluffy, you'll see. So usually there's a little plastic bit. All machines are a little bit different, but there's usually a little plastic bit where your bobbin sits in. Don't be afraid to take that out because you need to clean underneath. Now, I've got the little brush that came with my machine. Or cotton buds work well, or pipe cleaners. <clears throat> now the goal is to get the fluff out. You don't want it to be in there. Wait right, till you see this. Look at that. This has needed it for a while. And this machine hasn't been giving me grief. So I probably wouldn't have been looking in here until it started to do that. But you can see the fluff, if you just rub your cotton bud, it just grabs all the fluff out of all the nooks and crannies. 
yeah just like that the brush should do the same job it just grabs it the other thing you can do if you've made sure that you don't have any more loose or moving parts in there is that you can put a hoover to it but do be careful like i say you don't want to suck up anything that you really want to keep but it is a good way of sucking all the fluff out because you don't want any fluff to be stuck inside or go deeper inside <clears throat> let's have a look in the front yeah look at that fluff that is definitely better out than in don't forget behind So this this area is a lot more open than my Elna was so I can see actually a lot more stuff coming out of it Oops. I'm gonna use pipe cleaner for this bit it's a little bit deep and I want to make sure see all that fluff that is in the bottom oh, maybe you can't see that all the fluff that just came out of the bottom and that is literally right at the bottom of the casing I'm getting into that looks pretty good I think most of it's out it's my brush Put more there. there we go well, I'll make sure that my bobbin area is all cleaned out as well. Now, when I put this back, make sure that's out. Most of these will have a little catch. It's some sort of, oh, can't see. So this one has a little catch right here. It's a little dimple, basically. My, on my Elna, there's a similar thing. That will need to go up against something in your case so that it holds it in place so, so there if i try and turn that catch it again if i try and turn it that way it's catching there you can see it it's catching right there i want that to make sure it catches up against this bit right here so that little knob i was showing you here is catching up against this bit and that is what keeps it from turning when your throat plate is back on so if you do get confused you've taken that out and you're not quite sure how it should go back see if you can find that little bit that catches somewhere in the front it will be mine actually now that i'm noticing it it also has a little arrow right here that lines up with a little white dot here so i've actually got something now, if you'd taken a picture, if I'd taken a picture before I took it out, I would notice that, oh yeah, that needs to line up with that. So that's where photo has really come in handy. This fluff. Now, hopefully your throat plates aren't as messy as this, as in come in lots of parts. So this is one of those puzzles that parts of it have to go on top and under. It's just a case of fussing till it goes together. So that's all together. Oh, is it? No. See, I've missed a bit. Yeah, see there. I missed a bit. That needs to go underneath. So I'll take that out again. This is a bit of a faff. Oh, there we go. That bit's done. There. Now it's all together like it should be. And it just sits on top. Oh, that bit has to go under. Of course, there is a bit that has to go under. There we go. There, so that's back where it belongs. Not just a case of screwing it back in. Now this is a screwdriver that came with this machine, but it's still a bit at a funny angle to put these screws back in. 
last one. That's two. So don't be afraid to get in there, open that throat plate up, really clean it out underneath. There we go. My foot back on. Put my bobbin back in. Put my thread through. There we go. So let me see. I'm just going to do a little practice scrap just to make sure everything's all good now. Oh yeah. It's working perfectly. Sounds a lot nicer now as well. So that's that. So if I bring you back, oh me zoom you out again before you don't want to see me up close honestly you don't so there we go oh sorry i'm bouncing around there we go yeah that's good so that's cleaning out your machine Get rid of all this fluff so don't do as i do and wait till your machine is complaining at you to clean it like it, my bigger one did, it wasn't stitching very well. I'm like, oh, well, maybe I should clean it out. And yeah, and then I found a great big ball of dust underneath. So that's that. So, how to go triangles. <clears throat> I've had this charm pack for quite a while now. It's Tilda charm pack. But I've always had the idea, oh, I'll do something with that. And then I'll do half square triangles. So... I thought today, now that I've got some more time, would be the day to do it. Now the way I do half square triangles, I've got, my other side is going to be white, it's, it's, it's actually a tonal, if you can see it's got a nice design on it. And what I do is I draw the sew lines. So, remember I've been going on about my half inch ruler, half inch by eight inch ruler well Andy at Crafty UK made me some so now they're available online so everybody can buy one I love these they're so so handy for marking just like this so there's two ways you can do it the way I prefer and it's not everybody's way of doing it but this way I'll, I'll show you this way first so what I do is I take my little half inch ruler and I line up that middle line, which is the center line, with each corner. And then, just using a pencil and my sandpaper sheet, I draw a line on either side of that ruler. And then when I go to stitch it, which I will show you, I stitch directly on that line, both sides. And then cut down the middle, and then I've got two half square triangles. The other way of doing it, and I'll show you this way, is you just draw a line down the center and then you sew a quarter of an inch on either side of that line now it just depends which way you like best i i get confused very easily so i tend to always want to stitch on the marked line and so when i've done it like this before i've started stitching down that line i'm like oh no that's not the way to do it so if you do this I would use, where's my quarter of an inch foot? Still use your quarter of an inch foot. So you've marked down the middle. And then when you're sewing, you literally, you just put that, if you've got a guide on your quarter of an inch foot, line up that quarter of an inch guide on that line. And it will sew a quarter of an inch on that line on either side. And then you just cut on the line, basically. So let me turn you around again. So you can see, there we are. I'm not seeing anybody's comments today. I don't know what I've done differently or if nobody, if everybody's being really quiet tonight. There we go. So this is my pile of squares. Oh, the other thing I discovered, 
So if you do have a pack of charm squares, it's always worth actually measuring them before you start cutting your complementary ones. So my, oh, this is my label for my pack and it is only in centimeters. They haven't cut it into inches. And when I measured it, it was five and seven eighths square, not six inch square. So just be careful. So I'm just going to sew directly. This is the one that I've done on either side of my half inch guide. So I'm just gonna sew directly on the line. Let's see if you can see that. Maybe white wasn't the best option. So I'm just going to chain stitch a couple because this is how I would normally do it. But I would chain stitch the whole pile. So I'm just going to show you a couple. I'm going to use a different colour. Just so I'm not using the same fabrics. You can just carry on. Literally just chain stitch like that. There. So normally I would either have a book on tape on, an audio book or a podcast going and I would literally just sit and stitch through that whole pile and then when I got to the whole pile what I would do is I would flip them around and go down the other side. So it might take you an hour or so, but you would then have all of your squares stitched together just like that, chain stitched. Now I'm going to zoom, oh, zoom you out and then literally I'm, I'm just going to use my scissors for this because I feel like doing it old school. Oh, can you see? Yeah, there we go. And then just cut right down the middle. I'm just cutting literally straight across. I mean, if you take the dog ears off a little bit, then that's all the better. So literally just cutting straight across, dog ears and all. And then that gives you lots of half square triangles. So that charm pack is 42. So that give you 84 altogether half square triangles and then you've got so much you can do so you can just have them all go in the same direction or you can make them into stars I mean half square triangles are so versatile so versatile so let me turn you around can't why am I not seeing all your comments I'm not seeing anybody oh wait there's a button no that's for me to write a comment why am I not seeing anybody I can't see your comments Ah, now they're on. Okay. So, oh, I've got, I've got to catch up with you all guys now. Right, 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 right. Oh, hi, Shirley. Oh, do I oil when you clean normally? Um, no, only because you can't really see where you should oil. So on, on a sewing machine, there will be parts where there'll be like strings that you have to put the oil onto, like wicks. Basically, you have to oil the wick. And I think that's more in the top, oh, I'm showing you, more in the top part rather than the bottom part. I would leave the oiling, and I think you don't need to do it all that often, 
um, for when you have it serviced. I would just do a little bit of cleaning. Now on my long arm machine, it's a completely different story. That I do oil, especially the bobbin area. I have to actually add a drop of oil each time, actually more than a drop of oil, each time that I change the bobbin. So I'll add oil literally several times when I'm doing a quilt. So yeah. Oh, hi Annie. I'm going to give this a go. Yeah, good, good. The, the cleaning or the high square triangles? I'd be interested. Yeah, but definitely the cleaning. I've talked to, well, I have had ladies that are very afraid of opening up their bottom that sounded bad their machine throat plate <laughs> um just because it's unknown um and i don't want to mess with anything even if you just open it up and don't do anything you just look and then close it up just until you're confident to start prodding around you can do a little bit of uh cleaning but when you open it up i'll bet you there will be fluff and actually there is a story I heard from somebody who um, had actually gone to her sewing machine shop and she said, I need to get a new felt pad for underneath my bobbin case. And he said, what do you mean felt case, felt pad? We don't do those. Yeah, 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 the felt pad that goes underneath the, the mine's, you know, coming apart. He said, no, we don't do those. She, she, it was so dusty underneath, she had thought that it was a felt pad that had come come apart basically that it was supposed to be there so wherever it is inside don't feel bad because I'm sure everybody's had it and then some so don't be too yeah aghast but it will shock you into keeping in mind to clean out your bobbing area regularly especially if um, it's giving you jip basically oh hi Laurie I uh, hope you're safe and happy nice yes we're all safe everybody's so so far so good everybody I know is safe and well and yeah so we're just getting through it like everybody else really so yeah oh hi do this oh no I had a poorly dog oh I hope he's on the mend or getting better oh yeah half square triangles there so well I am going to continue with these and then I will show you what I've done I kind of have in mind I think I want to do a star when it's done because I, I one thing I do love Tilda this is why I've been kind of I'll show you look oh look at that oh, these are gonna be so nice so nice these are very much what I like oh I actually have a few of some of these in the shop on the yardage so if I don't get there first be quick if you want to snag some because these are older can't get these anymore these are nice actually that is on my list of things to do well maybe if I get there I have a rocking armchair that I want to recover and I have some Tilda jelly rolls that I have set aside to recover that so I'm just going to sew them together to make some fabric oh that's a nice one look at that one that's going to be interesting oh yes this is one of my favorites as well I definitely have some of that yardage in the shop this is going to be nice oh and there's that same one but in green it's got a little yeah it does have a little lamb on there oh hi Alice Oh, hi there, thank you. Going to try both. <laughs> yeah. Definitely the cleaning. And this high square triangles. Oh, like I said, the rulers, two pounds on the website. Steel. So useful. Oh, the other thing I was going to show you about these, which I really, really like. Um, would have been useful for the um, attic windows. Let's see, I don't think I'll show you. Actually, maybe I can show you on here really handy so they are marked every eighth of an inch but also the quarters and what Andy's done because I asked him to do this for me is to really mark the quarter inch at the at the ends so you've got a solid line on this side and a dotted line on this side but what if you ever need to mark a quarter of an inch in on a corner <clears throat> which you do need to do when you're doing Y seams so if I show you here, you can just line up 
there there you go so you line up that quarter of an inch and then put a little dot in that corner and that will mark your quarter of an inch also handy although it won't, this won't be accurate because i cut it by hand but checking your half inch i mean your quarter of an inch seam allowance i don't know if i'll be able to show you on here but if you hold if you do a normal quarter of an inch seam allowance and the difference between scant and a full quarter of an inch is when you put your quarter of an inch ruler or mark measuring a quarter of an inch from your cut side if you can see your seam if it's not underneath your ruler if you can see your seam on just on this side of the ruler and it's not underneath your ruler that is a full quarter of an inch however if you put it on and you measure it at quarter of an inch and that seam is sitting just underneath your ruler at the quarter of an inch line just underneath I don't know if you can see that if you sit it just underneath that is a scant quarter of an inch that means that your seam your actual sew line is included within that quarter of an inch and why that's important is because believe it or not that sew line will take up a little bit of space so if you really want to be accurate and your pattern calls for a scant quarter of an inch it's important that when you measure it that sew line is under is within that quarter of an inch that you're measuring so your sew line needs to be underneath your ruler it needs to be your ruler needs to cover it basically but only just not too much so that's the other good thing about that oh hi judy oh like you look yes oh, i love these i'm so happy these these came in yesterday yeah i think yesterday so they're online now two pounds bargain and i love it it's so useful because i use it for marking a lot especially something small like this because you don't want to have a massive ruler to be handling it it's really handy to have on hand to measure your quarter of an inch it's also really handy to have on hand if you want to if you, i mean if you've got units less than eight inches anyway so you can measure how much your your blocks are coming up to basically as you go so you can keep track actually am i being accurate so yeah love them oh hi sue is your john scott sewing world american happy them on youtube oh i haven't checked i'll have to have a look i would imagine it is by now because it's been over a week i bought the kit but i'd love to have a visual too um let me double check um if it is i'll share it on the uh, swift quilting facebook page so you'll have it there as well uh yeah so i'll be on there oh hi barbara going to clean mine tomorrow good girl oh hi sarah hi carol hi lorraine hi and that's that's everybody so yeah short and sweet tonight i have to admit um got my grape juice with me tonight i have to kind of yeah i'm like why not i'm not starting before four o'clock so we're all good because at the moment I'm actually on furlough from my day job so I literally have all the time to catch up on things so the last couple of days I have just had a couple of mental health days where I've just gotten stuff done for me and not actually done any work not work work yeah so that's what I've been enjoying but yeah oh should I do some more of these it's all these exciting oh 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 let me show you this one so I have to change let me move you around and zoom you in so you can see ah sorry ladies there we go that works so I need to change my foot to my quarter of an inch actually quite a few um Riley Blake patterns that call for you to do this to mark a line and then to sew a quarter of an inch on either side of it so here we go 
So I've just lined up my squares on top of each other. There we go. Can you see? Yep. So I've got my quarter of an inch guide lined up directly on top of my line. I'm just going to hold my threads. Threads off. There we go. So, in theory, this might actually be a quicker way of doing it because you only have to draw one line. So, you can see I've sewn on either side of that. And then, if you use your scissors, let me zoom you out a little bit, zoom out, zoom out. And see now I can just cut directly on that line so it gives me a cutting line there we go just like that oh there you go it's a little bit better hard square triangles I just have to press these out hard square triangles how many have I got so far? Two, three, four, six. Only 78 to go. Oh, there's the other one. There we go. So yeah. Bring it back up again. There we are. Oh, I need more comments. Oh, hi Lynn. I would love it. It's an optical illusion of the left handed machine because of the camera, it flips it, it reverses everything. It's like looking into a mirror, sort of a thing. So, yeah, it's, it's a regular machine. It just looks weird because of the phone camera that I'm using. Sorry, Lynn. Oh, hi, Lorraine. Stay safe as a beginner. Oh, good, 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 good. Now, don't, yes, definitely try this. This is a really easy way of using a chart pack or layer cake you could do the same with a layer cake just cut you know, just show it down the middle actually that would be really quick quilt because you'd get quite a big block um yeah from really big half square triangles so yeah oh hi Cher. <laughs> four o'clock <laughs> sewing tools down grape juice very civilized well sewing tools don't always go down but the grape juice comes out yeah I'm on furlough as well, so I'm sewing every day. Yeah, this whole furlough thing, it's a, yeah, interesting. Hubby's not on it yet. Thank God. He had did have a work at home day yesterday. That was interesting. Apparently we have a work at home day on Monday too. So yeah, we shall see how that goes. Yeah. I think we have to um, implement the two meter social isolation rule when he's working at home so that we have to maintain that two meter distance it's probably a better thing <laughs> you know what i mean right mum yeah so does anybody have any have any other questions i don't see any more comments coming up i can just keep on sewing oh we try some different fabrics this is the one i like Oh, I haven't marked that one. But this one I have. Let's count some other fabric. Oh, the dotty one's nice. Dotty. Um, oh, I'll do that one already. Yeah, nice. Flowery. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Let me take that foot off. I've got my quarter of an inch foot on still. And I do prefer to use my, um, what I call the flat foot. <laughs> it's probably something else. That's what I call flat foot. 
because it's, it's flat it's just the, your general everyday flat foot that you use for everyday sewing it doesn't do anything special right I don't know. something else actually I'll show you look I've got another one of those in here a base in the front of it and notches to line things up which you guys probably already know but I'll show you anyway podcast please oh yes podcasts actually well there's lots of different ways you can listen to them um i started out listening to them on itunes so if you have an iphone through itunes a lot of them are available um i've also discovered podcasts on audible audible which actually i listened to a really interesting one this week all about Rupert Murdoch called The Sun King and it was narrated by Jonathan Dimbledy, Dimbleby so that was an interesting one all about how he came about and his approach to media business and all of that so that was really interesting um, one of my favorite podcasts although this week last couple of weeks obviously they've been um, illness related which they normally aren't um, and it has been kind of interesting but normally they have a lot more varied topics one is Radio Lab, which I really love and they put out episodes fairly regularly they usually have a bit of a break at some point in the year but Radio Lab, you can actually go back and listen to their old episodes because it's been going for a little while and it's all about science or interesting topics in science but they explain it in really entertaining terms if I put it that way so they've got one of my favorite episodes that they did and they did a follow-up to it as well sorry I'm boring you guys now but it was all about color and how we perceive color and how animals perceive color and they did it with a choir so the whole podcast is with a choir so the more colors an animal can see the way they depicted that um, audially is that they had the choir sing a whole range of notes it was it was a really good one but they also did a follow-up on that which was an update on some of the information they they put in so that was an interesting one radio labs are my favorites this american life is a really interesting one and some of the topics are just general everyday life sort of a thing Sometimes they're a lot more interesting than others, but I like those. Um, I listen to them. There's an app called Podbean as well um, that I just have on my Android phone that I listen to them that way as well. But yeah, I would say try and delve into it whichever format you like. So on Audible, they have podcasts which are made for audible as well as um like this american life i think is on there i think they they have other ones i think i think i'm remembering that right because a friend of mine has a podcast and his is on audible but he's not on podbean so i think it is one of the platforms that you can listen to but itunes is a good one as well for that. um let's see that's yeah that's all about my podcast and all oh, the other ones which i haven't listened to more lately the true crime ones which have been kind of they've been a little bit too dark for me that i needed something a little bit more entertaining so yeah um oh hi margaret so that's 
asking out to all the questions. Sorry, I waffle on about podcasts. At the moment, I'm listening to an audiobook, which I just started listening to today. And it is about... I don't know when it's set. It's, it's in past times because they've stored riding horse and carts. And it's all about a bookbinder. But books aren't the same as books today. It's, it's a bit... Yeah, it's a little bit airy fairy as I put it that way because it's something about they bind people's troubles in books, something like or memories, they bind people's memories in books, and it's all a bit kind of witchcrafty. But so far, it's been interesting. I've kept an open mind about it, so we'll see how the story goes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, if you guys have any recommendations for any good books, do let me know because I'm on the hunt for some good audio books. Because I, I have started listening to it. I did start listening to the, is it the, the sewing machinist or something like that? It's about the Singer sewing machine, or it's a story around the sew, Singer sewing machine factory in Scotland. And it probably is a really good book, but the person who's narrating it is really it's not my it's not my cup of tea so I couldn't finish listening to it although I suspect the story is really good see oh let's see oh hi I Iona on your website it says all the rules are sold out oh we'll be having more um let me check on that because there should be at least 50 available um yeah when i get done let me go check because it shouldn't be sold out unless they've been really popular and in which case i'll definitely be getting more definitely be getting more because they're so handy That's all Sarah. Do I see Sarah Liz watching? Sarah, oh, I've got, I've got a tip for you. If you're watching, I've got a tip for you. Because I've been thinking about what you said about your thread getting caught up underneath. Let me just finish this and I'll show you. So let me turn this around. This way Ooh. so you can see what I'm doing right so Sarah has been having trouble with her thread getting jammed up underneath now I haven't spoken to her so I'm not entirely sure if this is when it's happening but if it gets chewed up when you start sewing put this on here Every machine has a tendency, well, once it has a tendency, but has a potential for doing that. So even on my fancy dancing machine, I always do this. I've got into the habit. So I'm holding my threads. So every time when I start sewing, I hold my threads bobbin and top, both together in the same hand. I'm not putting them really tight. I'm just holding them <clears throat> with a little bit of tension, basically. And so I always hold those until I get started sewing. So I get the first few stitches done. Now I can let go. That helps to prevent your threads getting snarled up underneath when you start sewing. Uh, the other thing that you can do if you can't remember to do that is get a little scrap of fabric, which I can show you, and start sewing on that before you actually sew your good stuff. So I'll pull this out <clears throat> and you can sh I can show you that. That's what I call a donkey because it's it does all the work for you. You literally just need so it's got a little scrap. I'm just gonna fold it in half. I'm just gonna chuck it on there. I'm not touching anything. I'm just gonna hold that. 
to sew to the end of that fabric and then stop and then I'm going to start sewing. Oh, sounds like somebody sent me a message. And then that fabric that you've just sewn through will do the same job as holding those threads, basically. So Sarah, I don't know if that's what the problem was, but if it is, try that. Try that trick. Right, should we undo some of these? Cut that off. Don't need that now. Oh, turn your bag, turn your bag, turn your Oh, oh dear, oh dear. You don't want to be that close. You really don't. No, no, no. Social distancing and all that. Yeah. Okay. Much better. Much better. Yeah. Oh, so that was that one. So they're coming along, got a few, I'll just probably do this tomorrow, finish them up. I've also got to get caught up on my temperature quilt, so that'll be something for the weekend as well. I did actually, last time I caught up on it, I didn't actually caught, get caught up on all of the temperatures. I just sat and made lots of the most common temperature, so that when I go to sew them together, I know that I'll have those available. But it's supposed to be warmer at the weekend, so maybe we'll get to add some colours. You never know. Because at the moment, mine's looking pretty teal on both of them. Ooh, let me show you these. That's my dots. And my roses. That was dots. That's, oh, did I do two? Must have done two dots. That's all got flowers. Flowers. There we go. So that's it. So get cracking half square triangles from Charm Squares. And that's the way to do it. So if you don't have any other questions, oh, oh, oh I've got, I'm getting all behind on you guys. Hi, Laurie. Oh, can't listen to audiobooks because they put me to sleep before I finish the first chapter. Yeah. Some of them, some of them can do that. Um, I haven't been too bad. I actually, tend to listen to them in the car so especially when I used to have to drive a lot so I mean literally drive for hours it keeps me entertained basically it keeps me from wandering oh hi Judy I was trying to oh okay so as soon as I get done I literally will go and check out the website and see why why they're not coming up available because they should definitely be available so let me fix that for you guys oh just got your ruler yay oh hi Jackie I listen to audiobooks all the time. Yes, but um, yeah, in solo, I love, I love audiobooks. I need to find a good one because I haven't found a really good one for a while. Um, yeah, I always love to listen to them while I'm sewing because it just keeps my mind occupied while my hands are busy, basically. Uh, oh, Agatha Raisin. I have listened to some Agatha Raisin actually. I think I did it ages ago, old school. On CDs, yeah. Uh, MC Beaton, comedy crime series about a lady of a certain age. Yes, I definitely remember. Ooh, start with the quiche, the quiche of death. <laughs> that sounds a good one. That sounds a good one. Okay, I will. I will check that out. Definitely. So, oh, hi Pam. Well, I'm getting ready to wrap up actually, Pam. So hopefully you'll be able to go back and. And watch from the beginning. I'm gonna go let leave you guys until next Saturday. I mean, yes, next Friday, next Saturday. Uh, don't panic. I'll be here next Friday, eight o'clock again. Uh, everybody, stay safe. I'm gonna go check out the website and see what's going on, so everybody can get their rulers. And yeah, in the meantime, stay safe. Um, keep sewing. And if there's anything in particular you want me to go over, definitely message me or let me know so i can cover that otherwise i'll think of something for next next friday night so you take care and stay safe and i'll see you next week so bye